Okay, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about validation. And if you remember from our overview, right, validation is making sure that the implemented model corresponds to reality in some way. Now, it's important to remember, and this is something that by now in this point of the course you should know quite well, all models are simplifications of reality. If they weren't, then they, they wouldn't be useful, right? Like a model has to simplify reality. But we hope that in some way it does tell us something about reality, even though it's a simplification of it. And of course, my favorite quote for this is the George Box quote, who's a famous statistician, who said, all models are wrong, but some are useful. In other words, they all are simplifications, but some of them provide us with some key insight into how uh, the world works, right? Um, now, when thinking about validation, I like to break it down kind of into related accesses, right? And one of those is to think about macro versus micro results or, or, or aspects of validation, right? So macro validation is comparing aggregate results at many different levels. So let's take, let's go back to that unit four, that diffusion example, right? Are the patterns of adoption that we saw similar? And the answer is yes, right? We see S-shaped curves of adoption of innovations all the time in reality, right? We see, and this is what, you know, some of the standard work by Rogers and Bass in this space has kind of shown that you get these like technological adopters, there's a small group of them, there's a big majority in the middle, and then there's a, a small group of laggards at the end, and you see these patterns of adoption, right? But then you can also think about micro-validation. So that's looking at the, the macro level. Micro-validation is, do the individual rules of the agents and the individual properties of the agents correspond in some meaningful way to real-world rules and properties, right? So do consumers use the same information when deciding whether or not to adopt? Well, there is a lot of theory out there that says that the two largest forces on consumers making a decision to adopt or not are advertising and word of mouth, right? And those are the two properties that we're using in making that decision in that unit four example, right? Uh, and do they have similar properties? Well, actually the agents in the diffusion model don't have very many properties. They basically have, did I adopt the innovation or not? Right? Uh, and yes, that is a similar property, something we have in reality, right? So at that point, you know that, uh, that, that we we're starting to pass these levels of validation. Now, you can also think about splitting up validation claims as being face validation claims versus empirical validation claims. Face validation just means do the general ideas about behavior and properties compared to real world properties. On face, does the model make sense? Right, uh, and so when we talk about things like the fact that uh, that agents in our model are influenced by advertising and word of mouth, we're talking about on face that's something similar to the way we are. The real consumers are influenced, right? But you can also talk about empirical validation, right? Does the data from the model correspond, or or that you're putting into the model correspond to real world data in some way? Right? And these are kind of the standard ways of dividing up validation claims. And in the next uh, talk, we're going to talk a little bit about how to put these together to come up with kind of a checklist of, of validation claims that you might want.